So if you listen to my voice and try to match it to my lips in these next two or three clips, you'll have trouble because I uh, didn't have my microphone going. So I'm recording it right now. Uh, that was Smokey, the uh, Buckeye Barbecue mascot. Uh, today we're going to uh, make some beef jerky, and you only have to deal with this audio issue for the first couple of clips, and it'll probably allow me to shorten my video. So last time we did jerky, I used some pre-done uh, marinade just from the store. Today I'm going to use Lem Brand, L-E-M, and this is Sriracha. Uh, Pre-made seasoning comes with the cure and everything. So we're going to show you how we do that today. So in this next clip, all I'm doing is mixing the marinade just like the instructions say on the package. I believe it's two and a half cups of water. But like I said, I just followed the instructions on the package. So I'm going to whisk that together and uh, go from there. And along with the marinade mix, there is a packet of Instacure Prog Powder Number no. 1 specifically, uh, and that is measured precisely for 5 pounds of meat, which is what we're going to use today. Whisk, whisk, whisk. We will see you in the next clip. So I decided to sort of make this my own a little bit. And uh, in addition to the pre-made mix, I'm going to use some uh, Ohio maple syrup. It is about a quarter cup. It's just what I had left in this bottle. And I decided to add that to the marinade. So I added it and whisked it. And from now on, I'll be uh, correcting my audio issue. Okay, so if you have been watching up to this point, I apologize for the audio issues. Um, I had to go back in and narrate that. I had my wireless mic plugged in but not turned on, which means silent videos. So, uh, oh well, it happens. Um, so I've got my uh, first piece of meat, and I've got two of these, one a little bigger than the other one. But I've got them out of the freezer, and what we want to do, or I've got one out of the freezer, is just trim off any fat. There's really not much on here, but uh, um, for jerky, you really don't want it to be fatty at all. Uh, so I'm probably going to take, especially since this is slightly more than five pounds any, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and take that edge off there with that fat piece. And I can go ahead and save a little bit of that, which I'll do. Um, there we go. And I've got a Ziploc bag off to the side here that um, I'll end up putting the meat in. And there is a little on this side too that I'm going to trim off. And I've just got a pretty heavy and sharp knife. It, heavy and sharp work well for, for the slices you want to do here. Um, probably a little more to take off. there and I can cut around that fat. I'm not worried about the grain right now for, for these little pieces. Um, that's probably just about as small as I want to go. It's probably too small really. Um, there might be a little more I end up excluding from this uh, as we go through our slicing. Um, but for now I think we're good to start. So on this particular um, cut of meat, uh, the grain essentially runs up and down. So the, the height of, of this roast, um, a little more fat there. There we go. All right. I think that's going to be good. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice this for now, and that's way too big, <laughs> I wasn't thinking, but uh, for now I'm going to slice this with the grain. And we're just going to go about quarter inch, eighth inch, quarter inch. Um, you know, I'm not using a slicer here. It, to me, it's not worth dirtying the slicer to do this. Frankly, with jerky, I don't find it to be that big of a deal um, for the pieces to be exact. But you can always pull pieces of jerky off in advance. So I'm going to slice this one down and I'll uh, edit this video and show you the next step. So I'll see you in one second. Can you help me real fast? You mind grabbing me a kitchen towel to put under this so I don't cut my fingers off? All right, this is what is left of the second top round. Um, so some of these are fine. I don't need to slice them again. Uh, part of it was a little thinner. Uh, some of them I will want to slice in half long ways here and get those tender strips. I've got our marinade off to the side here ready to go. So while I'm sorting through these, um, Next steps is we're going to pour the marinade over the bag of meat. We're going to mix it around really good. Make sure every piece of meat is, is coated. And for the next, I don't know, 16 hours or so, um, at least eight hours, um, minimum of eight hours, we're going to uh, um, slosh this around. You know, whenever I think about it, whenever I'm free to do so. Um, and then we'll cook it. So, and there we go. So we are ready to marinate. And pull this glove off. We got our marinade here, which is that Sriracha from LEM. And I added about a quarter cup of maple syrup to that. So we're just going to pour it in our plastic bags slowly, hopefully not make a giant mess. And I'm just going to pour it all in at once. We'll uh, get it mixed around there and evenly incorporated. I am going to put this in some sort of big bowl to go in the fridge uh, just because I don't want any leaks. That would be a mess and it would also mean you're not seeing this video at all. So. And when we close this bag up, we will try to get all of the air out. In fact, I'll do that now, even though I'm not done mixing it. And just get all of that air out. There we go. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing this here and then get it out to the fridge. And the next time, uh, you join me here, we will be ready to cook this. So we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so I have my uh, jerky out of the fridge and got some other supplies here that I'll show you as we go. Uh, I also have my cotton lined food handling gloves on because this is going to be a little bit cold. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit, or at least my view of it. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little butcher paper out on the countertop really for easy clean. I love, I don't know if you've seen this roll of butcher paper from Reynolds. It's great. You can just cut it. It's a super big roll and considering that it's not very expensive. I'll put a link to a few of these things in the description of the video. There we go, get that out of the way. The other thing I have here as I wrestle with this paper is some cooling racks. I, I sort of call them chicken racks. I think I stole that from 
Malcolm Reed on how to barbecue right. But we're just going to lay these out. And I don't know how many I'll need, but I've got a few here to start with. And I can always grab more. And we've got our jerky. I dumped this out of the plastic bag. I got in and I turned this over a time or two uh, in the last 20 hours, which is about how long this has been marinating. And we're just going to start pulling these out piece by piece. And you don't have to dry them off, but I usually let them drip or use my gloves. This is where you'll be thankful for the uh, cotton liner under your gloves because this is a cold handed job. And so we're just going to start laying this out. A lot of times I will try to separate between thicker and thinner pieces, but ultimately I don't find it to be that big of a deal either way. Some might get a little drier than others, or you can just go through and pull ones out early. I've done both, and it always turns out fine. So I'm going to get these racks loaded up. Oh, by the way, I have got my Traeger Timberline XL preheating to 165. That's as low as it'll go. So that's where we're going to do it. Um, so I'm going to get these trays loaded up and then we'll, we, we will meet you out at the smoker and we'll talk about cooking these. And All right, here we are at the Traeger Timberline XL, uh, heated up to 165. Um, and I turned the uh, uh, super smoke function on just to get a little more smoke on these. I may or may not leave it on the whole time. We'll see. I'm not worried about it either way, to be honest. Um, and we're just going to get these racks on there. I believe in total it ended up taking nine racks, some, eight or nine. Um, so we're just going to put these on a couple of shelves. Uh, one thing I forgot to do, which I'll tell you now, is I always like to coat the racks with a little bit of uh, cooking spray, some kind of oil just to... Uh, uh, help with any potential sticking. I didn't do it. I totally forgot, uh, but we're just going to deal with it. It'll be fine. Some of these pieces, many of them are a little thicker, so that'll help be able to get them off without them sticking too badly. Um, and I, I tried not to overlap any of these. Some of them may be touching, and that's okay. Uh, they will shrink up, but you definitely don't want to overlap them just to fit more on. Uh, you're better off doing them in batches if you needed to do that. And there we go. Now, because I'm using the lowest rack as well, I am probably, after a couple hours, going to come out and rotate all of these. And I'll probably bring you back and we'll take a look. Uh, but for now, we're just going to get this lid closed and let these take their smoke bath and, and dry out and make some good jerky. So we will uh, see you in a couple hours probably. All right, we've been uh, on the smoker for right at two hours. And so we're just going to take a look here. Looking good. Color is great. You can see that pink hue from the cure. Um, still pretty soft, so we're not where we want to be yet. But I'm uh, pretty happy with where these are. So uh, we didn't talk about how much time this would take, and that's because I have no idea. Um, you know, every day is different. Every uh, smoker is different as far as uh, how it holds temperature and how low it will go. Um, so there are a lot of different factors. So there's no way of saying how long it will go. Uh, I like to let these go until they're still pliable and bendable but they don't crack or snap apart. They just start maybe breaking and showing some of that white protein meat fiber. Um, so we're going to let these continue at least another hour or two and see where we are. I won't keep you here for this, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate these racks and make sure we get some even cooking. I may flip some of the pieces over. Uh, sticking isn't too bad, so my faux pas with not oiling the, uh, the um, racks is not... Uh, going to be a big deal, I don't think. So we'll bring you back in an hour or two. All right, we've been on three hours at our round 165. That's what our temp was set at. Of course, it fluctuates up and down. This one will be the easiest to grab. That's looking like beef jerky, everybody. 
Um, this piece is kind of thick, so I'm going to try to pull it off. I think that's going to be pretty good. Not uh, not cracking as far as breaking, but it's uh, bending nicely. Those white protein fibers. I'm calling this. This is good. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. Huh. Great flavor, great spice level. That seasoning is really good. All right. I'm going to cut this here. We'll see you inside and we'll uh, let this beef jerky cool and then we'll bring you back and go from there. All right, uh, we're going to try this beef jerky on camera. Uh, I've actually had several pieces as I was uh, getting it on the cutting board and into this bowl. Um, the one thing I like about this is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but because I sliced this by hand, uh, you know, I, the slices were a little inconsistent. Some are thicker than others. Um, some are really thin and crispy. Others are thicker and more chewy. And that variety I actually like really well. Uh, they both uh, taste good. Uh, they, they both have a consistency that I like. It's just different. So, so that pre-mixed seasonings from Lem, L-E-M, really good, perfect spice amount. The other thing I'm really glad about with this batch is that I cut it so that the bite was more tender. My last uh, uh, jerky, it tasted fine, but it was just way too chewy. I thought I wanted it that way. But really, I like it so uh, you're biting uh, against the grain so the meat fibers are smaller and it chews up better. Definitely going to do that from now on. So this is outstanding. Great batch of jerky. In the end, it took about three hours in the smoker. Again, you can definitely do this um, in the oven, you know, your lowest oven setting. If you have a dehydrator, of course you can do that. I like using the smoker just uh, because I, I like adding that additional flavor. Uh, you can certainly add liquid smoke. I think I mentioned that in an earlier clip. But overall, it's really good. Um, so before we go today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to store this. Um, but while I've got you on camera, while my face is on camera, I'll ask you to like and subscribe to my channel, like this video. Comment if you've ever uh, made your own beef jerky. What seasonings do you like? Do you uh, get a prepackaged one like I did today or do you make your own? Love to know about it. And uh, so let's uh, look at storing this and uh, then we'll close this video out. So thanks again for joining. All right, so there are a few different methods you can use to store this. Of course, a Ziploc bag is fine. We also have these uh, reusable Ziploc style bags, nice material, close up nicely. As far as how long this will last, it's cured, so it'll last two or three months in the refrigerator. You can freeze it for darn near forever. I'm not exactly sure uh, that the texture won't be affected because never really frozen it for very long. Uh, I might throw one of these in the freezer and just see how it does, uh, but it'd, it'd be fine. Uh, it certainly be edible. Uh, as far as the texture goes, we'll see. I'm still picking at this stuff. The other thing I have is I love this Zwilling uh, vacuum sealer. They've got special bags. They're Ziploc style, so you fill them up and you can just use this uh, rechargeable vacuum sealer. Turn it on. This bag is a little too big for this use, but we're out of the smaller bags. I've got some on order. It will suck all of the air out and stop itself when it's done. There we go. I love this little vacuum sealer and uh, that's uh, totally sealed up. So I'm not sure if I'm in the camera or not. I hope I am. Uh, the other thing I have here is um, a new vacuum sealer. This is a 
way too much vacuum sealing for this small thing, but it's got a 15 inch wide uh, mouth. So you can actually uh, seal some pretty big things in here. But if you uh, vacuum seal this, which we will right now. It's got a progress bar and I'll show you a couple things I like about this when it's done. There we go. So it puts a great seal on this and I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it uh, double seals things. So really nice seal and that will go great in the freezer. In fact, I might just put this one in the freezer. Um, so there we go. I will put links to all of these uh, sealing things and storage things in the description of this video in case you have an interest. Uh, but I appreciate you joining me today on this, uh, or the last couple of days on this beef jerky cook. And we will see you next time at Buckeye Barbecue. Again, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I'd certainly appreciate it.